Hello pre-algebra and welcome to our last lesson of chapter 8. This is lesson 8.8, .8, solving multi-step equations and inequalities. So here we're, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be taking everything we've learned so far and we're practicing and we're going to be given um, equations and inequalities that are pretty big, have a lot of these different steps, require us to do a lot of these different individual things that we've learned just break them down and do them in a large equation or inequality. So when we solve multi-step equations, right, we're just going to try and do all these small steps, right, and just break it down um, into the small steps that we have learned. So here is a, oh, a verbal problem. If x represents the science center's entry fee, the expression 20, open parenthesis x plus 2.0, plus 2.50, close parenthesis, represents the total cost for Mr. Murphy's students. Suppose 15 of the students go on a field trip to an art museum where the entry fee is twice that of the Science Center's fee, and there is a fee of $1 for the audio tour. If the total cost for Mr. Murphy's students is the same at both museums, you, we, can find the Science Center's entry fee by solving right these two equations if we set them up as being equal because it told us they were equal so again if we use the colors we were using right if the total cost for mr murphy students is the same at both museums right same at both museums that's why we have an equal sign here Right, and this is this here is the cost of the science center, and this one over here is the cost of um, the museum, the art museum. Okay. All right, so let's take a look and see how we got to each of these. So in the science center. Right, we were given the expression, this is the cost of the science center. And so that's what we have here. Over here, in the cost of our art, right, we were told that 15 students, looks like up here to the science center, 20 students were going, but here we have 15 students, so that's the 15 there. Um, the entry fee is twice, two times x. right here, so 2 times x, and notice that x is the same as here, plus the 1. So it looks like what happened here is we have 20 students, science center entry fee, plus an additional 250 for something. So x is simply the entry fee, and that's what we're trying to solve. So if we set that up as an, e as an equation, where both sides are equal, we can now start to do some work. So let's do that work. So let's start by using the distributive property to get rid of our parentheses. So 20 times x is 20x, and plus 20 times 2.5 is 50. 15 times 2 times x, so 15 times 2 is 30 x plus 15 times 1 is 15. Now we're going to go ahead and start with our variable term. So we're going to be moving our smaller variable term, which happens to be 20x. We're going to be dealing with that one to um, only have x on one side of the equation. So this is a positive 20, so we're going to subtract 20x on both sides. That cancels that out, and that leaves us over here with 10x plus 15, 50 equals that. 
now still trying to isolate x so now we're going to in reverse order of operations we're going to deal with this 15 here so we're going to subtract 15 from this side that deals with that subtract 15 from this side and that leaves us now with thirty five equals ten x. I'm gonna rewrite it up here. Okay, and so now we gotta get that x all by itself. So to do that we're going to divide by ten. That gets rid of the ten and now we just have x left. We gotta do that over here. And so now we have x equals uh, 35 divided by 10, that's going to be 3.5. So x equals 3.5, or in this case, x equals $3.50, because this is a problem and it's asking us for how much the entry fee was. Now, some equations may have no solution. When this occurs, the solution is the null or empty set shown by the symbol null or empty set. Those are the names of those symbols. Other equations may have every number as their solution. An equation that is true for every very value of the variable is called an identity. So let's see what happens when we solve this one. One of these is going to be an identity and one of these is going to be an empty set. So let's go ahead and work on our first one here. So we have parentheses, so we need to use the distributive property to get rid of those parentheses. So 3 times y is 3y minus 3 times negative 5, um, or 3 times 5 is 15. And since we're minusing that, that's negative 5 plus 25 equals 3y plus 10. Now, here's where we need to go ahead and do this operation. We can do that operation right there. So if we do that operation, we're going to have 3y plus 10 equals 3y plus 10. Now we can see we may have a problem here, right? This is going to be interesting. Our next step is to move, is to move our variable to one side of the equation. So if we do that, 3y plus 10 equals 3y plus 10. If we do that, let's move this one, minus 3y, right? So that, if, what we do to one side, we do to the other side. Notice in this case, that cancels them out. So we have 10 equals 10. Now, that's a true statement. But it also means that we, if we were to go back, we could put any number in there. And that equation would be true. So this ends up being... An identity. Right, 10 equals 10, that's a true statement, but it doesn't tell us what y is, which means that any number could be y, our variable. All right, let's try this one here. Negative 5s minus 14 equals 2, open parenthesis 2s plus 3, close parenthesis minus 9s. So again, we're going to deal with our parentheses first. So 2 times 2s is 4s. 2 times 3 is 6, so plus 6 minus 9s. And we'll finish writing out our equation over here. All right, let's um, combine our like variables on this side of the equation. So that stays the same on this side of the equation. On the right side of the equation, negative 9s plus 4s is negative 5s plus 6. Uh, do you see the problem here? Right. We're now going to go ahead and add... 5s to this side to get rid of the variable on the right side of the equation. But when we do that, because it is the same over here, we're also going to get rid of the variable on that side, which means that our final answer is negative 14 equals 6, which is a false statement, 
which means that this is an empty set. There is no solution. Okay, and that's how we determine those. Solving a multi-step inequality is basically the same, right? We're going to do basically the same things as solving a multi-step equation. We're going to use the distributive property to remove grouping symbols. We're going to use the addition and subtraction um, properties to um, start to isolate the variable. We're going to remember that if we are using a negative number, if we introduce a negative number into the inequality, we have to reverse our symbol our inequality symbol. So as long as we remember those, we can approach these the same way. So let's solve for open parenthesis x uh, minus 3 is greater than 6. So distributive property first. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times, three, uh, 4 times negative 3 is negative 12 is greater than 6. Okay, we're going to isolate that x. First, we're going to do in a reverse operation, we're going to do a additive property and subtraction property. So the opposite of minusing 12 is adding 12. So we're going to do that here. That, of course, gives us 0. And what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So now we have 18 on that side, 4x on that side. 4x is a multiplication, so we are going to divide by 4, which leaves us with x is greater than 18 divided by 4 is 4.5. And that's just how we're going to work through those. All right, let's look at... Um, what another example mariella's parents have budgeted at most 575 dollars for her quinceanera celebration the cost of the party room is 75 dollars how much can the family spend per guest on food if each of the 40 guests receives a five dollar favor okay so here we're going to be asked to set up our right we're writing an equation in this case we're writing an inequality technically is what we're going to do but it's the same as writing equations so we've got to figure out what does this mean so what do we have here so we have they can't go over at most 575 so they can spend less than 575 so that means right that on one side of the equation we're going to have 575 we know that they can equal it we also know that they can spend less than that so we're going to use this symbol here okay and that takes care of that now let's see what else we have here the cost of the party room is 75 dollars so it doesn't really matter how many guests they invite there is simply 75 dollars we're going to be adding that to whatever else there is how much can the family spend per guest on food if each of the 40 guests receives a $5 favor? Well, we have, if we have 40 guests coming, that's going to be 40. And each guest, we're going to spend food, I'm going to use F, plus favors, which is $5. Now I have my inequality, and now I can start solving for F. How much the maximum that can be spent on food per guest because this here 75 plus 40 times f plus 5 is can right whatever f is f has to be a number that either equals 575 or is going to be less than 575 so let's see so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use distributive property to put that 40 into our parentheses um, so 75 plus 40 times F is 40 F plus 40 times 5 is 
200. So we can now do some of the operations that are on this side of the equation. We might as well do those now. So we have a positive 200 and we have a positive 75, so we'll add those together. So that's going to be now 40F plus 275 is less than or equal to 575. Now we can go ahead and right, start to isolate that F. So we're going to subtract 275 here to cancel, give us 0 there. What we do to that side, we have to do to this side. So now we have 40F and 575 minus 275 is 300. Now to isolate that F and get it completely by itself, we're going to divide because 40 F is simply 40 times F. So division, that gives us one. And what we do to one side, we have to do to the other to keep this equal inequality true. So 300 divided by 40, and that is 7.5. So what we have is we have F, 7.5. F is less than or equal to 7.5. So the answer is, right, Mariella's family can spend no more than $7.50 on food per guest if they have 40 guests and they want to keep it at $575. All right, our last example, we're going to do another one and then we're going to be asked to graph our solution on a number line. So we need to solve this inequality here, 5a minus 8 is greater than or equal to 4, open parenthesis, a minus 3. So again, distributive property to get rid of those parentheses. That's the first step. That's always where we're going to start. If we have parentheses, we've got to deal with those parentheses first. So on this side, we have 5a minus 8 greater than or equal to 4a minus 12. All right, let's go ahead and move our variable. We always use move our variable looking for our smallest variable to move which is here, so we're going to subtract 4a on this side, and when we do that side, we have to do this side. So now we have 5 minus 4 is 1a, which really is just a, minus 8, greater than, equal to, that took care of that, negative 12. So now we want to get, completely isolate that a. We don't need to do any division because that a, right, 1a is, is just simply a. So we're going to have a, and up here, let's get rid of that a for a moment, right? So we're just worried about that minus 8. So we're going to add 8 to this side, and what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. Takes care of that. So now we have a greater than equal to minus 12 plus 8 is going to be minus 4. So let's go ahead and graph that. I'm going to make zero here just so I have a little bit more space on the negative side of my, actually no, let's go ahead and put it in the middle. Well, we can, we'll make it work in the middle here. So there's a zero, positive one, positive two, positive three, positive four, positive five, positive six. One, two, four, five, six. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven. All right, so this is a greater than or equal to, so we're going to be using a closed circle to indicate that the where we put this, where we start our line, includes the number that our line is touching. So it includes negative 4. That is part of the solution. So we're going to close our circle. There we go. And A, our solution is greater than negative 4. So that's going to be an arrow to the right. Just kind of 
make that nice and thick so we can see it. And we have now graphed our solution. All right, class, that is it. Um, that is how we do those. Just remember to break those down into their steps that we already learned, and it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Have a great day.